Bink, the humble monster. That up when I'm in the V, man. Absolutely, absolutely. You and your soon to be ex crib. No, nah, I'm in I'm in a Florida. Damn, it's falling down. I'm in Florida right now, Orlando. But um, we leaving. Yeah, that's, a, that's about to be your ex home. Oh, soon to be ex crib. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you right. I'm in, yeah. Right. I am. We out. We out. Out. Out of here. East. <laughs> east of the west, going to a whole new <laughs> coast. <laughs> yeah. But sure. Uh, let me let me let me introduce you first. Uh, so we can get into this podcast or whatever, but yeah, bro. No, Tony Edwards is actually an ex producer himself, still a producer at heart. You know, so that's not in the forefront of his life anymore. But you know, he's still doing beats, but he's been in the industry before, worked with a few, you know, dope people, Twister, you know what I'm saying, all types of people, man, like that in the, in the industry. And uh, he turned his life over and found a new, a new focus on um, real estate, and it's been paying him more so than what music was. So I'm bringing him on today. Bring him on today just to enlighten some of our fellow producers, young guys coming in, because I know how it is. And again, you come in and you get 10 grand this month and nothing for the next four months. So it's like you got to really do something smart with your money. You just can't just eat off it yeah. or, or doing those down to nothing. So, um, Tony, without further ado, welcome to the show, bro. Hey, Bink, man. I, I, um, it's an honor to be on your podcast, bro. Um, I, I'm, I'm assuming here this is a different topic than your, your normal episode. So definitely looking forward to dropping some bombs on investing, um, specifically real estate investing, which, you know, it changed my life, man, 11 years ago when I hopped into this side of the business. So yeah. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. I mean, like I said, it, it's totally necessary because even myself coming in the game first, I had really no fun. I was financially illiterate, to be honest with you, just sitting on a bunch of cash, not doing nothing with it. You know what I'm saying? And mm. not even understanding the, you know what I'm saying, the, the disadvantage of just letting that shit just sit there and dwindle. So right. I don't want them to make the same mistakes I made. You know what I'm saying? So it's like cause a lot of producers, you know, think they can get that 10 grand check and then go to goddamn Oak, One Oak, go to One Oak and <laughs> get some bottles, spend about two grand there that night. That's night one. Done. You only got 10. You know what I'm night saying? <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Right. Number one. <laughs> you know what Bro. I'm saying? So it's like just finding them an alternative, man, and giving them some type of plan or some type of structure to help turn that that type of life around. That's why I'm bringing you on today. Yeah, yeah 100%, man. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I was, I, I, it's, it's a paradigm shift. You know, when I, I come from the music business, I understand like you get this quick money. And what you're looking at, you make a quick 10 grand, you're looking at, okay, I'm gonna make another 10 grand next week, you know, or seven or 20 grand next week or next month, you're looking at next month, but that's not guaranteed. But that's the mentality that we have is like, oh shit, I'm about to make another 20 next month. So this 10 right here, I can spend that. But it's really just spinning your wheels at the end of the day, bro. And spinning your wheels at the end of the day. You can't collect, you can't count your, you can't count your money until it's physically either deposit and clear it in your account or in your pocket. That part. <laughs> that part. You can't spend potential. No. <laughs> no. Impossible. And you know, it's funny, though. I, when I first came into the real estate game, Bing, that was my, my, my mentality because I was, I was flipping, you know, flipping houses, making 20 grand, 30 grand, 10 grand. And I'm like, well, I got three deals, like five, five deals closing next month. And I, I, I basically carried that mentality over to real estate my first three years right. and then three you know fast forward three years later from 2009 to 2012 you know I could have been a lot further than what you know what I was in 2012 but I looked at it and I um at the time I hired a mentor which that, that's key he was like man like you you uh you get in the office but you're not playing defense so I wasn't saving and reinvesting as I was I was I was investing a little bit, but not as much as I should. And I was just spending so much active income at that time. My, like my first, my first six months of real estate bank, I had a hundred grand liquid in my bank. Right. My first six months of 2009, August 2009 was my first deal. Six months later after that, going into 2010, I had like, I didn't know how to act. Like I thought I, shit, I thought I was, <laughs> I 
thought I was rich. rich. Bitch. <laughs> so I, spit, I spit that so quick, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the name of the game, being um, for people who's watching this, is you know you're gonna get the you don't get the money, you're gonna get the ten grand, fifteen, but you, you want to like place that money into investments where you're gonna gain some passive income. And that's where you you want to really win at is through the passive or the residual income, right? You know, that's, that, key. But that's key. yeah. But that's just words like that or phrases like that go over the average producer head. So it's like just gotta you know break it down in layman terms with passive, sure. you no know, income is right. Okay, so basically to make it simple, because I'm a simple guy myself. Like you want to look at okay, like what what type of lifestyle, uh. How much, how much money do you need a month to sustain your lifestyle? Right. Some people, some people live simple. Some people be be happy with three to five grand a month. Right. And that could take care of their mortgage, they all their their expenses. You know, they live simple. They got a, a you know a three bedroom one bath house. You know, a, a two thousand six Toyota Camry that's paid off. Like that's that's them. Right. On the flip side, you got somebody who wants to live a more flamboyant lifestyle. They. 50 grand a month might be uh, might be the, the money they need every single month to sustain their lifestyle. They might want that Lambo that costs a monthly payment of Lambo, average what, four grand a month. You know what I'm saying? So that's four grand right there. You want to yeah. live in a $10,000 condo in downtown LA, that's 14 grand right there. If you're, if you're you got to add up all your expenses, like realist, you got to be real with yourself. So yeah. if you're spending, if you're spending 10 grand a month, in the club, popping bottles, fucking hoes, like that's that's twenty four grand right there. And you, so that's twenty four grand that's sustaining that lifestyle. What about you? Got to look. You got to. You got to. You got to look at the future. So you, realistically, you want to slow down. So what about your your retirement? What if you want to put five grand a month towards retirement? So that's another what we had twenty nine grand. Right. What about another save your savings account? Because you, realistically. You know, you want to have at least six months reserves to, to to just in case you know you get hurt. You know, you down for for a few months. That six month reserve is going to take care of that that lifestyle. So you want to add something. You know, you want to put something to the savings account. Basically, this little bucket. You're not touching that. That's that reserve yeah. bucket. Mm -hmm. um, just say five grand a month. Now you're at thirty four grand. This is this is for somebody who's living flamboyant. You know, right. Um, you know, plus expenses. What about a little extra expenses? Your 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 water, your water bill, your uh, your um, your cable. That's another what two grand. Now we at thirty six. So that's somebody who's living flamboyant. So if if your if your monthly expenses is thirty six grand, you got to ask yourself, what can I put my money in that's going to uh create some passive income? Passive income is income. That you make every single month, whether you we were on a we're on a podcast right now talking, you got money coming in, whether you sleep, whether you're on a vacation. I didn't even put vacation in. I forgot about that. But vacation, right. va you know, vacation. I know how it is in the music business. You you traveling all the time. You gotta travel to be in certain spots. That's a fact. You know, you gotta be in a certain spots, you know, different Grammys. You know, people wanna be in maybe not at the Grammys, but they wanna be in the seat of the Grammys because they wanna be in the clubs with the certain people. Like That's right. That that's expensive. That's expensive. So you gotta really look at yourself. Okay, what can I put my? Okay, I, I made ten. I made twenty grand this month. I sold two beats or a, a bundle of beats. Made twenty grand this month. I ain't gonna blow this this twenty grand on some clubs and shit that's really don't have no value. Where can I put this twenty? Or maybe where can I put this ten grand? At half of that twenty grand, where right. I can create something passive, where it's going. I'm gonna make money whether I eat, sleep, shit, whatever. That money's coming in. Um. My best opinion is real estate being is is through real estate. Right. You could park your, you could park your money in some some real estate, whether you you buying some investments for yourself, rental properties, or you could become a passive investor is what they call it, or a private lender, where you funding deals. Like I'm an active investor, I buy houses, but a, a lot of my 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 money my funding comes from athletes or a couple people in the music industry. And right. I pay them a percent on their money. And all they do is collect checks every single month. Or not checks, I do wires. But they, they get a wire from me every single month, basically 
a 12 percent, an eight to 12 percent return in money versus it sit, sitting in the Bank of America account. Well, Bank of America, your, your savings account was at 0.002 percent, one percent. You never see the difference in that. Nothing. So, inflation a year is three percent. Think. Right. Three percent. So if you got your money. It just use easy number here. So just say if you got your money sitting in Bank of America, you got a hundred grand sitting in Bank of America getting one percent. Is that what is that? A year is that is that a hundred dollars a year? If that yeah, a hundred dollars a year. Inflation is three percent. That's three hundred dollars. So you already lost two hundred dollars because That's it's sitting what? in the savings account. <laughs> a yeah. lot of people don't look at that. So you got to, like, I, I always teach this on stages. Like, you got to look at where can I put my money where it's going to get more than a 3% return? Because right now, 3%, you got to, you, if you get a 3% return and inflation is 3%, all you're doing is breaking even on your money every year. You ain't getting no return. So you got to find a place, a, a vehicle to put your money at where it's getting more than a 3% return because inflation is 3%. Right. So I pay my investors on a private lending side, eight to 12%. And for people that's wondering what private lending, also known as a passive investor. So just say I found a deal bank at like, just if I found a, a three bedroom, two bath, single family home, I want to keep as a rental property mm -hmm. for a hundred thousand dollars, right? Right. I'll, I'll call, you know, one of my athlete guys up. I know he got $1.3 million sitting in the savings account collecting dust, right. you know? Um, he will fund me that deal for a hundred thousand dollars. I'll pay him an eight to 12% money, just say 10% on his money. And every month I'm paying, I'm wiring him money, um, 10% of his money throughout the course of that, that, that funding. He don't do anything. All he was, all he is in this, in this case is just the bank. He's funding that deal. Um, he gets, um, to secure his money as a private lender or passive investor, he gets um he gets lender titles insurance so just in case that house blew up he's taken care of he also gets a promissory note promissory note basically is all the terms that we agreed upon 10 percent five years that's our bar five years 10 percent that's in a promissory note and he also gets a deed of trust so if i'm if i'm if i default on the payments that deed of trust gives him the power to take the house back from me like they use a Perfect. bank so it keeps, it keeps both parties uh, honest that's why I love real estate because I tell everybody this, man, like it's not hard getting a hundred grand in real estate or that get to have somebody fund or something, you know, and I guess in our case, some people might just say like borrow money. I don't like to say borrow money, but people to make other people understand I'm basically borrowing money, but it's not hard to get that money when it involves real estate versus like, try to, let me try to get a hundred thousand dollars somebody to fund some deals on stocks or, or a small business that I'm trying to start up. Like it's going to be tough to get that money versus like a property. They see a physical tangible a asset worth a hundred thousand dollars. That's worth 175, but I got it for a hundred thousand dollars. And it's, it's, it's secure. Their money secured by the real estate investment. The right. house blows up. They're taken care of. If I default on their payments, they get take my asset back. So it is, it's a lot of ways, man, to, to uh to make your money work for you um it's a no lose situation for the investor too that again there's a no lose situation with the investor as well because he gets the property or the money exactly i mean right. it's like risk it's risk and everything you mm -hmm. know but the risk is is very minimum in this case especially when you when you deal with um a savvy or experienced investor like myself bank i came into the real estate game in 2009 I mean, you don't know if you remember 2009, man. That was, that was like the Great Recession. Absolutely. Like people, people were going to foreclosure, losing their house. Like, I was one of those victims at the time. You know, my house on shoot, on shoot. Yeah. I, they, they approved. I was making, uh, I was driving trucks. I was making 23000 a year. And that loan on that property was one forty. I was paying $1,100 a month, making 23000 a year. You do the numbers on that, man. Like, shh. Tight. So, yeah, so I ended up going to foreclosure. I couldn't afford that shit. <laughs> I couldn't afford right. that. So that's why the market crashed in 2009, because it was giving out loans to people like me that really couldn't afford it. Was it interest only? It was, I was lucky it wasn't interest only, but I mean, I was making 23 grand a year on $1,100 loan a month. 
That was, that was tough. That was tough. I think the ribs was touching. Yeah. <laughs> so, man. <laughs> so that 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 time. Um, this was 2007, by the way. This was 2007 when I got approved for that loan. That was like right before the crash. When right. I say people listening to this, when I say right before the crash, that means this was like a bad market where um, a lot of people was going to the foreclosures, people was losing their businesses. Um, I mean, just look at the movie. Check out the movie called The Big Short. You ever seen that movie, Bing? No, you told me about it before. I got checked out The Big Short. Yeah, that movie is classic. It, it, it literally talks about what that market was or what that time was in the 2007 and then when the market crashed in 2009, 2008, 2009. So the Michael Moore movie, Capitalism, is covering the same shit. So those are two great movies Ooh. to catch up on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they, they broke it down to, you know, the derivatives. Because the derivatives was controlling what the interest rate was with the mortgages. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So they were fluctuating. Yeah. They were fluctuating derivatives like at, at will, basically. That's some white collar shit. That's some red tape. <laughs> Exactly. So the interest only loan, like you said, was the setup, the ultimate, because you end up re you end up reselling that house five, ten times because somebody come in, you get ten dollars, ten thousand down payment, start paying the payments, the payment get too high, they fall out. Next, come in, same, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Same thing over and over again. So they were just Man. talking about that. You know, that was the setup. It was set up for you to fail. You know what I'm saying? When we was talking the other day, you said Michael Moore. I looked him up. He so he. He did the, the Fair Height 911 joint. Absolutely. I mean, his, I first one was bowling for, his, his first person was bowling for Columbine when he talked about the dudes that shot the school up the first time the school got shot up. He was the mm -hmm. one who did that movie. That's crazy. That, that was his baby. That was the first one. And then he's just been going nuts ever since. But he's super, super, super informal. He doesn't just talk at you. He gives right. you paperwork and, you know what I'm saying, legislation and everything to back what he's saying to you. So you're not just saying, oh, that shit ain't true. or that. No, yeah. he he put it right up when you, you know, right in your face, you can get it. But um, that's crazy. Yeah, but uh, I got, I got to watch the big short. But at the end of the day, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what I'm saying, um, just some type of idea for these, for these yeah. dudes. Like I said, like should they team up with somebody else, put, put their money together? You know, what I'm saying, what kind of, what kind of uh, situation thing they should shoot for? You know, what I'm saying, like a flip yeah. or a renovation, like you know, what I'm saying, like which one? Well, I'm just putting myself in their shoes as if I was still active in the music industry, you know, like you, you know, your studio all, all the time. Like going into a, a, when I say a flip, like a rehab, I wouldn't do it if I was full time in the music industry because you still got to manage that rehab with contractors. You, you know what I'm saying? It's all, it, it's an active thing. Now, right. if you do go into a, a, a rehab, I will partner up with an investor that's active. And you can just be on the money side and he will manage it and y'all split the deal 50 50 or however you you know you agree to that that split you just be the right. money person i'll just be the money guy um but going back to the rental side um a lot a lot of a lot of people don't know this but you can get um bank financing up to 10 investment properties if you got good credit. So I don't, I don't know if people that's watching this or listening to this, but um, if you got good credit, I would say around a 660 or, or above, and you can show tax returns of income. And I'm assuming these, you know, a lot of these producers got reserves. If they, you know, got, if they got 10 grand in the bank, that's some reserves in the bank. Right. You can, you can get approved, potentially approved for bank financing up to, I mean, yeah, up to 10 properties with bank financing and if you don't know bank like right now is an all-time low interest rates for banks it's th it's like uh between two and a half to three percent interest rate that like that's crazy right that's it's crazy so you can buy you could buy a rental property at let's say three percent 30 years just say on a on a, a sixty thousand dollar investment three percent 30 years that's if i took a wild guess including your all-in payment, that's probably about $500 a month. Maybe a little cheaper than that. And to just say if the rents in that area are going for $1,100 a month, you paying your mortgage $500, your rent's $1,100, that's $600 a month in cash flow. Right. 
you get 10 of those times 10, that's six grand a month right there. In yeah. cash flow. And that's not including the because as investors, we're not buying a retail price. If I if I got a if I got it for 60, that means it's worth 130, 120, 150. Right. Right. Now I'm sitting on some equity on paper. I can sell it later on. I don't want to sell it because I want to, I mean, the name of the game is you don't want to sell your, your, your cash flow and assets unless you have right. to. That's the panic right. button. You want to live off that passive income, AKA that cash flow. So you get 10 of those things. That's six grand a month using that example. But here's the, here's the, here's the game though. Being now you can plan monopoly. So what you can do is, just say you got one, you got a, you got you got ten of those. They all got some equity in them. Just say sixty grand. You bought them all sixty grand a piece. They all worth one forty a piece, right? Right. They all they all your balloons on them five hundred dollars a piece, but you rent them out eleven hundred dollars a piece. That's six hundred dollars a month times ten. That's six grand. One, if you wanted to buy some more properties, you can refi. You can refi cash out. You can refi on those on those loans. Just say you you, you took one out. So just say on one of your $60,000 investments, you go back to the bank and took out 50 grand. That's so 60 plus 50, that's what, 110? Right. <clears throat> so now you, you took out, now you got $110,000 loan because you took out 50 grand, but what you do with that 50 grand, you go buy another property. Right. That's what that's what the white man does. All you're doing is playing monopoly with, with the money. You you using other people's money, whether it's the bank in this example or private lenders. Right. Private lenders can be your grandma that got a retirement account. Um, it can be uh a, a, a multi Grammy producer that you know that got this money sitting in the account. That can be one of your private a lot of you a lot of y'all watching this that's heavy in the, in the game that already have placements, you know people in the industry already. Some, I mean, those are great people for to, to fund your deal or partner on. So if you don't got great credit, that person might already have, they might have great credit and you can use them as a credit partner to buy houses. Or you might not have the money, but they, you know they got some money in their account. You can use them as a money partner to buy houses. That's why I like real estate, because it's not hard. Like all you got to do is really um just use your like your creative your creative mindset a little bit and be like okay because most people most of most are set back because we set ourselves back because we make up these these bullshit ass stories in our head like oh man ain't got the money or man ain't got the credit right but that man across the street got good credit or he or she got the money in the bank why you why you can't bring him in as a as a, a, a partner that's what the white men do <laughs> yeah if they don't, if they short on something, they're gonna bring somebody into the deal so they can get the deal completed. And you just you give them a piece of the, you give them a piece of the pie. I mean, that's it's. it's yeah, really I mean, you got to they give you the bread. You know, hey, Bing. In two thousand, my my first my second deal was my was a was a rehab. Mm -hmm. my, my first deal was a wholesale deal, which a wholesale for the for y'all don't know what a wholesale deal is. All you're doing is you're going get a property on a contract with a seller. You actually putting it on the contract. I had $200 in my name being, I put the property on the contract as if I'm buying this house for 40, it was for $48,000 in 2009. I had $200 in my name. He think I'm the buyer, but I called the investor cause I knew an investor was buying in that area. I sold it to him for 60,500. That investor brought the $60,500 to the closing table. I got the 12.5, the seller got 48. I was basically the middleman. That was my first deal, twelve thousand five hundred five hundred dollar day. My second deal was a regular rehab, like a fix and flip, like you see on HGTV. Guess who funded that deal, Bink? What? The? My grandma. My grandma was my first private lender, bro. What? My grandma. Carolyn? My grandma. Yep, my grandma. She funded that deal. I paid her fifteen percent on her money, and I was, I, bro, I was scared as hell because, well, you know, we come from, we basically cut the same club. I'm like. My mentor at the time, he's like, because he, I told him the circumstance of my grandma's like, she, she probably got some money in her IRA, retirement, blah, blah, blah. He said, that's a, that's a, she can fund your deal. And I'm like, man, I don't want to, you know, ask to borrow the money from my grandma. But he had to, I had to get it wired in my head that it's not really borrowing money. It's opportunities for both her and me. 
She right. had her she had her money sitting in her uh, her IRA and some of her savings is is getting one percent or less. Right. I paid her fifteen percent, and that was well above what people was paying back in the day. I was just scared. I just I was like, I pay you fifteen percent of your money, <laughs> and, she, and so, so she said, yeah. So how much money did, did she end up giving you? She, I think it was. She she gave me like. I want to say 50, 60 grand between out of, her, out of her IRA account, out of her IRA account. And she was already above that age at the time. So she could just take it out. So she basically wrote you a check and then you took that. And we had the property. I and used her money. Property. I used her money. So I partnered with my, my, so I partnered with my, um, with my mentor. He came in with some cash. And he was like, Tony, say, if you're trying to come into this deal, you, I mean, either you can wholesale it to me and I can stroke you a, a quick three grand check, which I was like, I'll take that. But I want to go into this fix and flip because I want to learn the ropes or how to rehab a house. Right. He said, well, if you're going to do that, you know, you try to find some money. And I told him about my grandma. He's like, oh, he's like, that's, your, that's where your money going to come from. <laughs> so he basically told me what to say. I was, I, man, I, ain't, I was nervous, bro. Like I, I'm, I'm in my brain. I'm like, I'm borrowing money right. from her. Hey, hey. I'm borrowing money, so I, I had to wire myself and get and get equipped that it's both is an opportunity for her. So she funded me around fifty grand for the rehab costs. Right. I paid her fifteen percent. She didn't do any work. She didn't do all. She did was wire the money to the top of the company on closing day. I got that fifty grand check to use for the rehab, and I I made I structured it where. It was a six month loan because it, you know, in a fix and flip, you're supposed to get out six months or less. Right. She got her, she got her 50 grand back plus the 15% interest. In six months? In six months. We actually got, got in and out in five months, but yeah, five months. So what, what was that 15%? How much more was that? Um, I don't remember exactly off the top. I think it was around seven grand, give or take. About 7,000? On top, yeah. Yeah, on top of the fish. Yeah. That same fifty grand, if it was sitting in her 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 IRA, that same fifty grand, she probably would have got fifty thousand and one dollar. <laughs> yeah, five fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, about fifty sixty bucks. So right. get, 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 guess who guess who who she told next? Yeah, this is like a domino effect. My uncle right. Butch. My uncle Butch. Butch came and cashed out. He came. He was my second lender. You know what I'm saying? How much he made by the same seven or he made more? He, he my my next rehab that he uh he he funded me 40, 40 grand. It's the same thing, rehab costs. I used him for the rehab costs, not for the purchase price of the actual house. My mentor was putting up that money for the cost of the house. I was right. bringing the rehab money to it. Right. So when you sold it, yeah, I was busting it down. Yep. Mm -hmm. So on the yeah. first house, on the first house that you got fifty for, how much? How much was that house that he? How much he bought the house for? You remember? Yeah, we bought that for seventy two five. Seventy two five. So you put you didn't put the whole fifty in for rehab, did you? Um, it was like in the mid forties. Mid forties. Okay, yeah. so it was a full rehab. 40, right, a little forty yeah. the rehab. So now you went in for about what that one eleven. Yeah, 111, we sold it for one, 160. Sold it for 160. Yeah. yeah. So if you sold it for 160, that means you clear about 50 racks. Well, you also got, no, nah, it don't work like that. Because you when you put it on, say, say you, you put 40 something into it, it's fixed up. Now you're going to put it on the market where the MLS is what they call it, the multiple listing right. service. I, you, I need an agent to do that. So she's going right. to list it on the market. She get paid three percent, right? That next agent, that agent's buyer, um, with the buyer's agent, she's gonna bring a buyer that's gonna live in it. That's another three percent, so that's six percent off already off the purchase off the listing price, right? And I gotta pay closing costs once I sell it to them, and they're gonna ask for me to pay their closing costs. You know, like a homeowner, they're gonna always ask the the the, buy, the seller to pay their closing costs. So there's other fees involved too so we we netted around like i don't know at the end of the day i'm thinking roughly around like 30 grand give so, or take. yeah 
So y'all rent y'all sold the crib or you rented the crib? No, we sold it. It was a it was a rehab. So we we put the money to it. We we purchased for seven, around seven two five. Put about forty ish into it. Put it on the market for one fifty nine nine. And we had you know fees involved as well. And like you know like closing costs. We had to pay the agents commissions, all that stuff. That all that comes out at closing when I resell it at one fifty nine nine. Right, but I'm just looking at your what your uncle gave you. I mean, what, what grandma gave you, what grandma Carolyn gave you. You say grandma gave you fifty. Around 50, yep. That's what I'm saying. So how in the world did you make any money if she got 50 and you only, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, on, that's what I'm, no, that's oh, what I'm okay. 72 five for the purchase price. It just say 50 for the rehab. So 72 five plus 50, what's that? That's around? Uh, 120. 120, yeah. Yeah. So just so so just say like another um twenty to sell it and, and like agent commissions, closing calls. We had to pay for lights to be on still while the rehab was going on. We had to keep the grass cut. Uh the water had to, you know, all that. So just say another twenty on that one twenty, how much is that? One forty. One forty. We sold it for one fifty nine nine. What's that? That's 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 another nineteen thousand. Yeah, so we, yeah, we made about twenty grand on that joint. 20 grand, 19, 20 grand. Yep, that's the numbers. Okay. 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 Yeah. Now we're breaking it down. That's right about the numbers. Yeah. But I put okay. about, I didn't put the whole, but I didn't put the whole 50 into it. It was around like 45 right. repairs. So right. we really made about 25. You kept that too. So you got yeah. that too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so that, that, yeah. That, that's a bread and butter rehab with those type of numbers, you know, like selling it for 160 on what we call ARV, the after repair value, what is worth fixed up that's what the terms is in the real estate investing side right yeah so a lot of a lot of a lot of, a lot of people that's listening and watching this you don't have to use your money like the name of the game is to not use your money like that's the most wealthy people in real estate don't use their money they're bringing in other people with money money partners and so how hard is it to come across a hard money lender Oh, that's the easiest. That's that's separate from my grandma was a private lender or my uncle. Like people, like your friends, family, colleagues, those are private lenders. Hard money are like sh they're they're in the business to loan you money as in, to an investor. They don't right. they don't they don't run your credit. They base it solely off the deal, but they charge an arm and leg though. Right. That's they might charge you. They might charge you sixteen points with I mean sixteen percent, five points. Now, what's the five points? So a point, so just say like, you go to a use an easy number. So a hundred thousand dollar loan, mm -hmm. five points is five percent. Five points is five grand off a hundred thousand dollars. That makes sense. Yeah. So that that's the money that's up front. The points are up front. So you got to come to the just to get the hundred thousand dollar loan, you got to pay the hard money up front five grand. That's that's five points, just to get the hundred thousand dollar loan. Plus, you plan another. Just say, in an example, sixteen percent interest. That. Okay, so like you yeah. said, I want a hundred thousand. When mm -hmm. I said when I pay them back, I'm paying uh, the extra percentage on it, the extra five on it. That five points is up front in most cases with hard money lending. They they want you to have some skin in the game, and you, usually to get the money. However, it's convenient money though. It's just expensive. That makes right. sense. So just go back to yeah. easy number. Just say your just say your full loan with rehab and the purchase. Let's say it was it was sixty thousand dollars for the for the house, forty thousand dollars for the re repairs to the house, so hundred grand. Mm -hmm. You barn they're gonna charge you five points to that hundred grand up front. So that means the day of closing to buy the house, they're gonna wire a hundred thousand dollars, but you gotta come to them with five thousand dollars to the closing table just to get that hundred thousand dollars. So you really get 95 grand in a nutshell. Right. Plus six, when I say 16% interest, I'm talking about annual interest. So 16% divided by, they just say 12%. So we use these numbers, 12% interest in this example, uh, a year, that's uh, that's a thousand a month, right? Thousand times 12, 12%. Shit, that was like 12. That's not 120, no. I'm sorry. Um, what's 100 divided by 12? Um, 12 percent interest is that's that's a that's 1,200 dollars 
No, that's twelve thousand dollars a year. And twelve thousand twelve percent. So if you had that rehab for six months, that you had to pay five grand up front and just say twelve percent interest on that hundred thousand dollar loan. That's that's that money is costing you a thousand dollars a month at twelve percent interest. Right. So so when you when you rehabbing, and we're talking about rehab and stuff now, but when you rehabbing, you gotta think like man, I gotta get in and get out. Cause this thing is costing me money every single month. Right. So six months go by, you you got a closing, that money costs you that six thousand dollars, that twelve percent interest for six months, right. plus that five grand, that, that money costs you eleven thousand dollars. So that's how much that hard money made, that hard money lender made it was a quick eleven grand. They didn't do nothing but just be the bank. Right. <clears throat> but if, if y'all interested in hard money, you know, you got Lima, one capital. Um, again, like they base it off the deal. They don't really base it off you. They base it off like, the deal because they can they know they can take the house back. They based them off the numbers. So, but um, that's just the money for the rehab. Now, how do they go about locking down the property without having no money? And I know you got a remedy for that too. You gotta you gotta figure like when we're talking about real estate specifically in a single family. When I say single family, uh, four un one to four units is considered single family. Like even a okay. fourplex, that's a that's a residential that's a residential, the residential side of things. Okay. Ninety nine percent ninety nine percent of the times, when you dealing when you buying property in the um the residential side, the homeowners don't have any type of education on real estate investing. So, and I had, it took me a while to, to wrap it around my brain because I'm in my first deal, I had $200 in my name, no experience. You know, I'm going into this house and I'm scared to make an offer on a low ball, a low ball offer. You know what I mean? He's asking, right. he's, he's asking 80 grand, I'm getting it for 48K on the contract. Like my heart beating fast. Cause I, you know, I'm thinking, I'm a, you know, we can, I don't know, I'm just, I was just nervous because I had no experience. Of negotiating but most of these people don't have any education being like they don't know what their house is really worth they don't they you know, know they about to get forty eight thousand dollars cash that's all they and, know and, and second and secondly an average person just say like just say your 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 aunt you know what i mean your auntie in this case you we invest somebody going to our house to make a cash offer she's not asking like hey let me see your bank statement right you know that that's that's is that part like they don't know what you got in your account they just think like hey this investor buyer that that uh that i that i called i saw his his we buy houses bandit sign on the street i'm thinking it's a huge corporation you know so it is all all you got to do is get all you got to do is lock the property up on the car if y'all watching this you find a deal you all you got to do is get it on the contract as a buyer in that contract, you have an assignment clause. An assignment clause meaning that you can you can wholesale or assign that contract to somebody at a higher price and you make something to call the assignment fee at closing. Your your end buyer is gonna bring all the funds to the closing table. So you have the option. You can buy it, you can close it and rehab it or keep it as a rental yourself. But that assignment clause gives you an option to like, you know what, I can't come up with the money in this 30 days. Let me go a wholesale at the bank real quick. I got it for 50. I know he's going to buy it for 60. I can make that 10 grand doing nothing, get in, get out. Right. right. That's, that's a wholesale deal. With no money. No money. That's what a lot of people are doing right now. But once you, like, it's like you add different tools to your investment tool belt. I can wholesale. I can keep it as a rental. I can be a private lender and just be lending money. I can do a fix and flip. There's so many ways, and not just a few ways. I, I mean, I can keep going. I'm not just trying. I'm not trying to get super, duper deep because I, I want to keep it simple. But those are some four quick ways to make money in real estate. I mean, and not but just that. You, you, you offer those services outside of here. You know what I'm saying? So right. that gives people some incentive to come see you as well to get more of an in-depth breakdown of what's going on. I mean, that's the whole purpose you're giving. You're giving game, but at the same time, yeah. you have a service where you can actually help people further and, and keep that relationship going staying yeah. in the ear. so i want people to understand whoever's watching wants you to understand that too just to mo most definitely reach out to him and try to just lock in you know start putting your mm -hmm. money to some good use rather than just you know because it's, it's always scary to 
to go into a venture you don't know a lot about. Yes. Yeah. You know, Facts. So, you know, Facts. And you like that's your last. So you like you got yeah. your hand on that shit tight while they taking it. They, you, you, God. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, okay. let, 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 let me let me give your, your viewers and your listeners my number one strategy right now and uh, um and by the way a lot of my my athletes are buying it you they're buying they're using their money to 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 uh to put into the strategy so it's something called a slow i call it a slow flip you know it's a slow flip investment is it's like a rental but it's not because you're not taking care of any repairs you're not a landlord but you're still getting the same monthly rents from your tenant, or I call them tenant buyers in this case. So this is what I like about Virginia too, Bing, is we got cheap prices for investment property. So I like to buy my, my buy and hold properties between the $20,000 to $40,000 range. Right. It's just say $30,000 in this case. So I got a closing next week that a wholesaler, remember a wholesaler, a wholesaler's wholesaler meter property, I'm buying it for 30. He had on the contract for 22. So that, what is he making next week? Eight grand, right quick. Eight, eight grand. He got on the contract for 22 with the seller. His seller don't know that he's wholesaling it. <laughs> they think he the buyer. He found right. me. He found me. He know I buy in that area. I said yes to 30. He's going to make eight grand doing nothing. He's getting in, getting out. He never even owned the property. He just signed that contract. So I'm going to bring the 30 to the table. So what I'm going to do, my extra strategy is that I'm going to close on it for 30. And these, and these work, Bing, and these work. I'm going to sell it, um, basically owner financing to a tenant buyer. So owner financing is basically, I'm going to say, all right, here's going to be the real number. I'm going to buy it for 30. The day I, I, sell, I, I close on it next week, I'm going to put it on Facebook Marketplace for seventy nine nine, eight seventy five a month. 30 years, three grand down up front. They got to give me three grand. So somebody that comes with, I know it's going to sell. I, I own many of them in that area. Somebody's going to bring me three grand down. Now I'm on it for 27K. Right. They're going to pay me 875 a month off a three, a 27K investment. That's like a 20 something percent return on my money. Right. For now. Like, but yeah. But then, and I, and, I, and I, basically they they so that step they pay me seventy nine nine they give me three grand down up front so now they're really gonna be at seventy six nine but I'm financing them on paper seventy six nine for thirty years so that it's and it's gonna be interest they have to pay me interest like it's just like you go to bank and you get financing if you gotta get a loan of property they pay you you know you gotta pay them three percent interest for thirty years. I'm charging my tenant buyer around the average twelve percent interest that they gotta pay on that seventy six nine loan. Right. And they pay me eight seventy five a month for thirty years. Like I'm basically getting my my twenty seven thousand back in what three four years. So you so you already getting paid back in full for the house. Everything else is, to the, is in the green. In the green. That's my that's my buying hole, and I like them sweet spot prices. I'm thirty grand, 30, 30, 20 to forty grand, price, the um houses in that range because the cash flow is amazing, and my my return my cash from cash return is twenty to twenty five percent. Inflation is three percent. Remember, I said earlier, inflation is three percent. I'm getting twenty to twenty five percent average on each of those slow flip investment properties. That's well above three percent. So I'm 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 cleaning up. So I I I teach that to a lot of people, and I got a lot of um athletes right now buying our Virginia market right now because they love that strategy. Because they you know they they playing football or doing wrestling or whatever the case may be, like they all you know we all want to, like are interested in owning some type of investment property, but you don't want that leaky toilet call. Like I I don't like that leaky toilet call because I'm, I'm I don't want to be a landlord. Right, <laughs> but with this strategy, they can. I put it in our paperwork that they they are responsible for a hundred percent of every repair. So they're going into this house that needs work. They're gonna do the work themselves, and it's still paying me eight seventy five a month. So basically, you 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 dealing with the people who don't have such a good credit score, exactly like that. So you shouldn't even be in this house, basically. That part, yep. That you know what I'm saying. So yeah. then, if you gonna call and wear, wear me to death by the goddamn toilet in the sink. <laughs> exactly, but the, the 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 average person that comes with, come to me on that side is usually like a handyman. 
He gonna do the repairs he, and stuff. Yeah, he gonna do the repairs. He gonna live in it. He got like a little family, little girlfriend, or you know, whatever the case may be. It's usually like a tradesman. Like those are usually my my guys. Like, and a, a lot of times, man, I be getting, I be seeing repeat clients on that side too. They're they're on like four of them, four of them joints in the same area. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's crazy. So who's watching this, if y'all like, just say if y'all live in San Francisco, obviously you can't buy no 40 grand or 20, 30 good thousand house. It's impossible. You can't even buy a doghouse out there for that. <laughs> yeah, damn right. But, you can't. but when you got like this type of strategy where you're not dealing with any repairs, they can't call you for nothing. Um the 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 money they give you up front is non refundable, like that three thousand dollars. You can do this in virtual markets like Virginia. Like my athletes, they they do this, they you know, they're a whole nother state. But I got this system in Virginia already. I got a t I live in I live in Florida right now, about to move to LA. And these houses right. are in Virginia. I don't when I buy these joints and clothes, I do I buy them sight unseen. I see pictures, but I don't see them in person because I know I'm not dealing with doing the repairs to it. So you now Detroit is like Virginia times ten. Yeah. Fact. I don't know what's going on. I'm talking about houses boarded up along the highway. Like, whoa. Man. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. I'm talking about Rows of them. I'm like, God damn, like, <laughs> they're like part place. So. Yeah. Like interesting. You know what I'm saying? That, so I'm that, like, Whoa. Detroit is an animal. I, I I wouldn't want to start the trend in, though. See, the houses I'm buying them at, like, you know, just say, like, the good side of downtown Newport News, which you under, you know where that's at. Right. It's people living on that whole block. I'm not trying to, I'm not going to buy a house and, like, you got 20 houses boarded up and it's the only house. From the, I'm not, that ain't me. Like, I, I, I can't do that. I ain't you know, I wouldn't at least buy something something decent where you got you know, it might it's, it's a low end area, but you got our but street, look, everybody living on it. But at the same time, you may be the one who develops that area. Yeah. Yeah. When you look at it like that, it's nobody's like, coming over here, okay, cool. But well, let me yeah. rehab these a little bit and this is Betonio's row. Yeah. I, I got some investors that that's that's putting their, their minds together. Um they've been talking about it for a couple of years. They they basically going back to private lender. They're raising money from private lenders, you know, him, him, him. And they got they putting all a pool of money together and they're playing this to build up a place like Detroit. Right. Um it's gonna take a lot though. <laughs> no, they, said, a um, lot. they said the average income in Detroit is between sixteen and nineteen thousand. Yep. That's so <laughs> so you go figure. <laughs> But at the same time, Woo. with that being with that being said, those um, those uh, what you call it, those uh, container houses would be ideal for them. Yeah, we was talking about it a while back. You put me on, yeah. yeah that's yeah, that's, to make yeah, a community, that's, them, make a community of them joints. Yeah, that's ideal. That's a play right there. That's a good play. play. Absolutely, because like shit, sixteen, yeah. nineteen thousand. Because the crazy thing is, I seen a documentary on Donald Trump's father. You know, it was, it was a Donald Trump. They spoke about his father, and they were saying that he got into the real estate game right during the Vietnam War. So he mm -hmm. was like, he thought to himself, like, damn, this war over, or about to be over. He gonna have all these military guys coming home with a bunch of money, and let's just say the average check they come home with is thirty grand. 23 or 25,000. He just Damn. built houses all in that area so they could afford. Wow. He didn't do nothing beyond that. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Something. So <laughs> he, they came home, like he racked up. Like, right like up. All, all the military people came right to him. Like, oh, yeah, let me get that. Let me get that. Like, let me get that. Yeah. Wow. Let me get that. You know what I'm wow. saying? So it's like, I think if you, if you go with Detroit in that way and yeah. you know, buy a whole bunch of land, a little, a little out probably. Yeah, yeah. Just, and just put those containers and got like two level joints, like a Fact. community. But mm -hmm. the thing is, I always wanted to do something like that, but at the same time, I want to scrutinize who lives out here because at the end of the day, even in the mm. projects, even in the projects, you got some people who love being out there and, and just have no interest in making where they are beautiful. But then you have mm -hmm. people who just feel like, okay, I really don't want to be here, but this is my situation right now. And I want my grass to be cool in front of my door. And I'm going to put some flowers right. out there. Like, I want those type of people Facts. in these low-income houses. You know what I'm saying? Mm. The people who still take pride 
and where they live at. Right. Not right. the one who don't want to cut the grass. Right. right. You know, right. All that type of stuff. Like that brings the value down off, off top. So if right. you have, yeah, go ahead. I was saying, I ain't gonna cut you off, Bink, but don't, those are the ones you want to target to buy their houses, the distressed people, the distressed properties. Those are ones, those are good, those are deals. Them people that, that don't, that don't care about their property is distressed. Right. Those right. are, those are the ones that an investor like myself are targeting to get on the contract, whether I'm a wholesaler or I'm going to buy it for myself. Right. Those are the, those are the good deals. Oh, no, they're going to take that bread. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, another good market that I know is a hub for a lot of y'all, you know, the music cats listen to this is, is uh, uh, outskirts of Atlanta, like Georgia, like you got, you know, not in Atlanta itself, because Atlanta, you know, the value has increased over the years, but you got, you know, right. Columbia, Columbus, Georgia, um, the, the Cater, like Barnes, all, yeah, them, 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 you get some cheap, like 30, 40, 50 grand houses out there. Cheap. Cheap. Yeah, I just I just literally bang. I just hold I um I literally closed on a deal in America's Georgia last last week. I wholesaled it. Somebody oh, deep America's Georgia. It's probably like two hours from Atlanta. It's a small little town. Oh wow. America's. Somebody Did you even go out? Look, did you even go out there? <laughs> I haven't seen. I've never seen a house ever in my life, bro. Never done a deal ever. <laughs> This how look the, so people. I mean, like people know you bank for music on on your social media. Your brand is music. My brand right. online is a real estate investor. Right. I got a DM from a seller that was selling a house in America's Georgia. They was asking thirty two five. I think originally, I did some comps. Comps for people that don't know what comps are is comparables. I had to look. I went to the Zillow dot com and just looked. Okay, what are the souls in that area? And I saw they was buying them for like ten grand all the way to like twenty five on average. Oh, wow. Right. Like, so I'm like, okay, she he's asking thirty two five. I was like, let me let me I offer them fifteen. I was like, yeah, I, I just do it out there. I was like, I pay fifteen for it. Never been in that area in my life. Don't never seen it. Fifteen, because he sent he also DM some pictures in in the right. um, DM. So I saw some pictures. So he was like, ah, right. and I said, at least I can do is um uh, twenty five. I said, now twenty, take it and leave. I can get get you done in two weeks. I'm just confident. Like, I, I don't know nobody out there. I just said, right. just better confident. He said, 21, take the lead. I said, all right, let's do a 21. Yeah, I locked he, it. I had my, I'm going to give me a thousand. <laughs> I had my assistant send him a docu sign of a contract. Right. This is what we call virtual virtual investing, by the way. Virtual means is a whole nother state. Never seen it. You're doing it sight unseen, basically, other than right. looking at pictures. Whatever. I had my assistant send him a purchase contract for 21 grand. The day that he sent the sign to us, um, via DocuSign, came back signed. I had to look for a title company, so my assistant just Googled what, what title companies were in America's Georgia, because we needed a title company locally. We right. found one, sent that purchase contract, tell him to get the title work going on. Simultaneously, we put we took his pictures that he sent us <laughs> and put them on Marketplace, and I put it on the market for 30 grand. I'm fishing for an end buyer, for right. wholesaling it. I had a buyer come in. No, I put it for 35, 35 grand. I had a buyer mm -hmm. come in, a, a Spanish guy. He said, "Hey, my my, my friend, you know, um, you know, uh, I like the house. Uh, would you uh, can would you take um, twenty five for it? I'm already in the green. I'm in I'm in it for twenty one. So I'm already in the yeah. green light. Yeah. I was like, no. Nah, I, I said thirty. So he went to go, he went to go uh, check it out. The exterior, it was it was vacant. You know, thing was like on the door was unlocked or something like that. It was just one of the distressed properties." He came back. I told him 30. He, he went to go see it. He said 28. That was his bottom line. Boom. Made a, uh, I had a seven grand deal. Check this out. So a few days before closing, and this is, this is like a shark, a shark little tip here. I had my assistant call the sellers like, hey, we got good news and we got bad news. I'm already in it for seven grand profit. Right. Uh, we got a closing coming up Monday. However, um, we can get it closed on Monday. The, that's the good news. The bad news is that we need to come down on price. It, you know, it was a little bit more extensive repairs than what we needed. We need to be at 15 grand. I'm just trying to increase my profit. That part. You have to do that all the time. So I'm already at seven grand. So I'm trying to increase it from seven to 12 grand from going down to 15. No, mm -hmm. seven, seven, 13 grand. So he came back. He said, at least he said, because I was in it for 21. He said, let's meet halfway. You're already on the contract for 21. You're trying to be 15. Let's meet halfway 18. 
I said, yeah. So now I, I increased it. It went from seven grand wholesale deal fee to 10 grand. Right. I made a 10 grand wholesale deal last week. Today, we just locked a, another property up in that same area for um, 15 grand. And I got a buyer at 23. And these are wholesale deals, no money, no, I'm not buying a house. I'm just flipping the contract. Once I get on the contract, I'm wholesaling. And how you find these deals, I know people are like, damn, how you find these deals? We use text campaigns. Text? Texting, like texting. So yeah. we'll, get a, we'll get a list of homeowners in that area. Of va just, we, we'll, we just say a list of homeowners, a list of vacant properties in that area. And we'll skip trace, meaning that we'll use a, we use batch skip tracing.com, meaning we'll get the phone number. We'll have that, get that list. We'll use batch skip tracing.com. That service provides us the numbers to the homeowners on that list. And we'll upload that list to a text service called textmagic.com. And we send out text campaigns and hey, my name is Bink. I would like to buy your property at 123 Main Street. I got cash. Would you like to sell it? Right. We, we use text campaigns to, to lock these deals up. It's four cents a text, Bink. Four cents. That's like going so door to door. That's like a door to door situation right there. Oh, but on steroids. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> on steroids. Going right through his pocket. Bro, we, we getting deals from text. From texting, can't like, we're not, we're not looking at these houses. We're not. We're just, people are negotiating on text because everybody's on their phone. Okay. So if I had, so I just say if I had 400 bucks, that's going to reach out to 4,000 people. That's four cents a text. Right. Somebody on this, most people is watching has got $400 in the account. I mean, if you, just, oh, <laughs> and where I get my list, the list, you know, Antonio property data.com. That's where you get your list. It's a seven day free trial. You, you get you get a list of like people that's on the foreclosure you get a list of people that are vacant properties all you gotta do is plug in atlanta georgia you put plug in any any state bro listen i went online two weeks ago just inquired about some dental insurance yeah from the time i tapped the button of my name and my mm -hmm. phone number my cell phone started ringing instantly that yep I'm talking, yep. I was attacked. I was cyber attacked. Like, <laughs> yep. at least about 20 calls. Yep. So I know the type of list you're getting. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because, yeah, so I, I, I yeah. get it. Yeah. I, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, all it is is like he or she that, that understands um, that data is important. You're going to win the game because all it is is data, man. Like, I'm getting a list of specifically a list of homeowners and it's it's different type of filters. I can get a list of absentee. Absentee meaning that I own a property here in Orlando, Florida. I'm sorry, I live here in Orlando, Florida, but I own a property in Virginia. Right. I'm a I'm an absentee because I don't live in that state or I don't live in that property. So I get I get I get hit myself. People text me, they cold call me. You know what I'm saying? I get an automatic vo a voicemail. What they call a ringless voicemail? Like right. people leaving an automatic voicemail. Hey, this is this is Sean. I like to buy your house at um, you know, I, we we buy houses in the area, cash. Please call me back, or you know what I'm saying. That's absentee. I can get pre foreclosures. I can get tax delinquents list of people that's behind on their taxes on on their on their property. There's so many ways you can get a list, and then you skip trace that list. So what's the what's the name of that tech service again? Textmagic.com. Text the magic. No T text like T E X T magic.com oh textmagic.com okay yeah oh it's it's bro that's that's a ninja way like you don't understand you can use the I mean, text magic for anything like you know if you had a, a list of let's say you had a list of uh producers on, on your subscriber list and you got their numbers you can upload that list to text magic and be like hey i'm having a, a producer battle next you know what i'm saying like right yeah this is a marketing tool a texting marketing tool that's a fact See, this is all I'm trying to, this is all this is pertinent information that you know what I'm saying somebody young or even somebody old is still in this in this music game that's been robbing the shit out of us at a rapid right. rate, you know what I'm saying? So like you you have to have to put your money 
into something because just yes. chipping off it, you just chipping off that bitch. Every time you go to the ATM and get a receipt, damn. you start getting nervous as a mom. Like, God damn. Bro. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. That, that's why it's important to have that, that cash flow, that, that passive income. You, you know, that's almost damn near guaranteed coming in every month. I mean, I know some of y'all got royalties, you know, royalties, but I know now no, that's gone. Kind of that's, out. Go, that's gone. That's that's really that, listen, that's damn it. Listen, man. Mechanical royalties was another way to eat besides your publishing. Now, mechanical royalties, we basically traded in mechanical royalties so they can make money off the streams. Streaming, so that that fucked everything up. No, so they can make money off the stream, not us. I mean, I mean, it fucked okay? everything up for you, for the for, for the producer. For, for or the, the for the, no, for the creative, the artists all across the board, all for all the creators across the board. You know what I'm right. saying? They some kind of way, corporate America convinced us that nobody wants to buy physical copies of music anymore. <laughs> so, I never looked at how the FCC and the government correlates. I never seen the, I always knew the FCC was from government shit, but I never knew that Donald Trump was going to be the one to sign some shit about the streaming rates and shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just tied into that. So who, who runs the car industry? Government. Mm -hmm. Who took the CD player out of the car? Government. Damn. So once you took the CD out of the car, that pretty much put the CD where the vinyl was. Mm. Oh, you know I ain't never think so, of that. So it's easier to convince us that no, nah, that's old school. I might, might buy that shit no more. I might want no CDs. But meanwhile, they're making billions from mm -hmm. subscriptions. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So they talked us into giving them our content for nothing. I imagine people right. gave you houses to sell. They that's just crazy. gave you the house to sell, and you gave them the little uh, the percentage. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. get a, a, a percentage just to uh uh every month. They give you they a four hundred thousand dollar house. They give you a four hundred thousand dollar house for free, basically. And you, sit, and you send them six thousand a month. Nah, that's crazy. Right? So that's, that's why crazy. I told you. For every million spends on Spotify, it's like forty three hundred on on Spotify for the master holder. Right. And if you sign to a label, then that master holder is the label. Mm. The artist gets 10% of the $4,300. So it's like $400. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's that crazy. you got for That's a million crazy. spent. Right. Meanwhile, if you sold a million records back in the day, people was getting like, you know, 10 cent a record, you know. Yeah. Even though that was even though that was super super disrespectful because once cops came in the picture, people was getting five to seven dollars a record. Mm. Damn, for people real? Like yeah, people like Shorty Lowe, Jim Jones, like wow. you know what I'm saying? They all when he did that um mm. beep, 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 Yeah, that, yeah, that was that shit. That was yeah. cops. So he That's was crazy. getting five dollars a record. Wow. You see what I'm saying? See people like Nipsey and uh, and uh, uh, Tech Nine, like they own their masters. Mm -hmm. So it's different when you pushing your shit and it's your music. That's that, that, you know that that four thousand a million was like okay cool that's mine, but for you to sign to somebody, and your music is is on this fucking website and it got a hundred million views and shit, a hundred million streams, and you get four hundred dollars mm. per million. So what's that like four hundred? That's like four hundred racks or forty racks. For forty racks, it's probably about forty racks. Forty, 40 racks for a hundred well, million. Come on, man! Like that's. I mean, we're I'm talking saying? about we're talking about like those are Beyonce type streaming. Like you gotta have some on that. Like a do a lip or a pop star. Like that's you gotta that's have just, at that count to get them streams at that that number. Like that's why. So I it's said, like you know, so people when I was like. Just, two, Two million, three million streams. That ain't nothing, basically. That ain't shit. What? I mean, you like, okay, okay, let's just do this. Okay, let's just two million. So you got about eight hundred dollars from each joint, like maybe from Amazon, you know, from a uh, uh, title, because title pay more than Spotify. Does. 
You know okay. what I'm saying? Then you got Apple. So you're getting them from every platform. Mm -hmm. But it's still minimal. Consider it. That's crazy, bro. It's that's nuts. Crazy. So that's why I say they convinced us that nobody is interested in buying physical property of music. This is why it's important to have a brand. And I'm, I'm going to drop you know, some, because I do internet marketing. Mm -hmm. I teach people online how to flip houses. That's a whole other stream of income for me. But right. I, get, I provide value and I, I sell that value. I don't give, I, I give free value. But when you get free value, people want to buy into you more. It's the same with you, Bing, and the producers as, or artists who's watching it, especially if you already got some placements. I don't care if you ain't making money on that on the music side. Use that as a brand so you can come up with a $97 a month membership to, to get into your, your Facebook private group where you can show them how to make a beat. Like, you know the people that want to watch you make a beat, Bing? Like, okay. that, like, that's 97. You know how much people you would get in a membership site? What's the what? what this, you leaving money on the table, bro? Like you know, <laughs> this internet, this, bro. This is a whole other. This is this is outside real estate. This is probably some quicker money for y'all. You know how easy that you can get. To say, what's what's five hundred people times ninety seven a month? I, I can't. Yeah, that's probably about uh, that's about about forty five hundred. Or oh, forty five thousand when it's twenty two because nine nine times five is, is forty five. It's five grand a month. I think it's five, five. grand a month. I think five. So a hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred people times ninety seven a month. Yeah, so that's like damn near a hundred dollars a person. Yeah, hundred dollars. So hundred times five hundred people. Hundred dollars a month times five hundred five hundred people. What's that? Okay, five, I guess that's five. Right? That's five grand to come into your ninety seven dollar a month private Facebook group. But you can provide value. You're gonna show them behind the scenes of what Bink doing with the samples. I, I know you might be, you know, against that, but you should be doing that though. For these for these private people. And then within that private, you wanna upsell them because you probably provided so much value, you're gonna charge them a thousand dollars to come see you in person, make a beat. That's money, that's a whole different, that's a whole different you don't understand, man. That's easy money. Yeah. That's easy. And I'm talking about 97 is cheap. I think Nip did that one time for uh, 10 grand. You come to Cali, ride around with him in the car. Oh, do you understand? Food. Like, man, like, I, I don't think a lot of producers or people in the music industry do that. But I come from that side where, you, man, it's so much opportunity with the internet. And I can help you get that. Shit. You can come, you can have like a, you can do like a, a a ten. You can okay. You can have like a ninety seven dollar month membership program, but they also get some. They also get say ten modules in this little membership, this course area. But with that monthly, they get a private Facebook group coaching. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like people mm -hmm. look up to you. Like you're you're that you have fans, so they would love to be a part of that. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like yeah, I'm definitely leaving money on the table. That, that's you know how much that's easy money for you, bro. I'm and I'm 500 people. That's a low. That's low. I mean, we ain't talking about a thousand. That's 10 grand a month. You can get a thousand people in that thing. And I ain't even, I'm not including the upsells. Like, okay, so you got this 97. I'm gonna just give you like a how a, a, a course works. You got you, you offer a $97 program, like you talked about. They buy mm -hmm. that $97. Now they're going to the second page called an upsell. Okay, how would you like to get my snares? You know what I'm saying? Thank you for buying the 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 the, the Bink All In course. You know, whatever the case. Uh, I know you anxious and ready to get to this $97 program, but how would you like to buy my snares and my kicks for only $47, a one-time offer? Boom! Now you got you just somebody bought the upsell. They buy that. Now they go to a second upsell. <laughs> they gonna now you offer them something like that. That, that Stripe account, bro, they be coming in. That's. That, that's okay. easy money. Like you can whip that up and like if you're serious, like the next 45 days you can have a this out, this project completed. Like that's easy money, bro. Now we need to talk about that off camera. Yeah, but people watching this too, this is, they can do this. But especially if you got placements already, like if people know that, and you showing off that plaque of a uh, you know, you part of this 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 number one billboard, which ain't getting paid for, but that's branding that's gonna help out for the 97 dollar program. Right. 
that's that that's going to sell your ninety dollars seven dollar program. Like I promise you. <laughs> no, like I said, I, like, I agree with you. I definitely leave I'm, I'm leaving money on the table. That's for sure. Easy money, like that's easy. Like, that's you understand. That's like, the passive so, income. That's the passive income right there. That's passive income. That's that internet. We call that Wi Fi money. That's that Wi Fi yeah. money, bro. That Wi Fi money. That money come in like clockwork on, on the side, man. I use some of that money to buy houses cash sometimes. Yeah, so that's <laughs> what I um I can attach I can attach that to the merch. Merch, that's boom. You could speak in the way you say it. Attach that to the merch. I need one of them, 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 them pieces of merch is there, bro. Not you need a yeah. shirt, hat. Yeah, need, yeah, bro. we got all that. We got all that. Um, we got wristbands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. About Letterman jackets, the whole shit. And what you been, I, I know you you don't really disclose on, like, especially, uh, well, you don't really disclose you making beats. Imagine you did that shit nah. in a private group, though. This is making it even more valuable. You might be right. saying you should have $2.97 a month. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't do it on some on some YouTube. Hey, this is how I did that with a new dress. Like, yeah, right, okay. Bro. You can hit that in your when you selling the program, like you know, to get people to get you be like, you know what, I'm gonna show you how I did Devil New Dress. That right there, they were like, Oh, I'm sold. Let me go get this this pro, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't show you don't show that online, like for free. <laughs> man, that's nuts. That's nuts. Well shit, man, we, we got down, we covered a whole like a whole lot of ground, bro. Like I'm this is a very I'm I'm excited about this episode just for the simple fact mm. that it's it's food for thought. You know what I'm saying? It's not mm. just talking, talking shop. Like we talking shit to help, you know, bring value to your livelihood. You know what I'm saying? Help. This is survival. Mm. Shit. You know what I'm saying? This is some real survival shit right here for these like these young dudes. Like I say, nobody really knows what to do with seven thousand, ten thousand. Like they don't mm. know what to do with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause a lot of times you're waiting so long for it, it's spent by the time you can get it. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so that's but at the end of the day, it's like fuck it, if we already broke. Then I'm. Just, I'm still with old people. I'm take that seven, put it over here, and at least some will start coming back mm -hmm. eventually. You know what I'm saying? But if I just keep taking the seven, here you go, got cold, here you go, AT and T, here you go. That's yeah, I'm back to square one again. Right. So right. We're gonna go. If we're gonna go homeless. Let's go homeless because we just gotta we put an investment in. You know what I'm saying? Right. We we'll sleep in the fucking car for a month, whatever the fuck. Well, at least we know. Yeah. The next two months we're gonna have. Two grand coming in a month. But keep in mind too, like the people watching this, it don't have to be your money. The name of the game is OPM, other people's money. Right. So if you're around heavy hitted producers and artists, I just, I, you know, my, my this is my mindset as an investor side. I'm just not going to be in the studio with them, you know, cool, you know, vibing out, making some, some hits. I'm trying to think of, okay, this producer been in the game. I know they got a bag. It's, I'm trying to find a way where I can partner partner with them. They could be the money person. They could be the friend. You already around the Rolodex. Yeah. In some cases. That's a fact. Some people, like, some of them people, you know, you being, and people watching or listening to this already have the, the private lenders that don't even know it in the music industry. There's right. some people in the music industry with, 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 with a bag, for sure. Oh, absolutely. That's that been a fact. Yeah, those are those are the investors. Those are your lenders. If you if if you don't have the money, your own money to do this, which I don't I advise you, always use other people's money if you can do that. As you know, right. OPM. Well, shit, like I said, man, yeah. we gave them some some game, and we 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 gave them a lot without giving them everything. So make sure you give people your you know your your, your social media again before we get up off of here. I give you that. Yeah, I'm saying yeah, go ahead and follow me. Yeah, you can follow me on IG. Um, just go and tag in um, Antonio underscore the letter J underscore Edwards. Um, I got a free book too, man. They can just go to AntonioEdwards.com. Um, just grab my free book, you know, how to invest in real estate uh, using none of your money out of pocket. Um, but yeah, I mean, just follow me on IG. You could DM, whoever watching this, send me a DM. Tell them, uh, just let me know you was, uh, you was on the Bink podcast. You was listening to the podcast and I'll, I'll, I'll reach back for sure. Another thing, this is not a somebody I just met. Also, I've been knowing this guy since he was a baby, like literally. Right. We, we come from we come from church. We both from North Virginia, so it was just I was it's an honor to bring you mm -hmm. up here, like for real. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's an honor, man, to to to, to be on here. I, like I said, um, you know, um, I know it's a different episode for for 
your, most of your listeners. Um, I want to leave them one last thing too, Bing. Um, I think it's very important is um, if you don't have one already, uh, put this on your um, to-do list is to get a self-directed Roth IRA. For, for your producers out there, that's especially you make some consistent, decent income, you know, um, <clears throat> that's where that's where you're going to really build wealth because you can put money into your IRA, your self-directed Roth IRA tax-free. Right. And when I'm doing real estate deals, when I'm, some of my deals that I close bank, those go into my IRA tax-free. Right. Like, and some of my lenders, my private lenders, they lend me out of their IRA tax-free. So when they get their return back, it's going back into the IRA tax-free. It's crazy. Right. It's some white collar stuff, man. But, you know, a self-directed Roth IRA is where it's at. Um, I use Equity Trust. That's the name of the company I use. I've been with them for like seven years. Right. Um, Equity Trust. But just at least open up one. I think it's only like a $200 to open up an account. And you just put a couple of dollars in there every, every now and then, and that's tax-free money. I never heard of it. You can buy houses out of your IRA. That's what I'm like. Real estate is made for self-directed Roth IRA. So I can buy houses out of my IRA when I get enough, you know, you got enough money accumulated in there. You yeah. can buy yeah. investment property out of it and that, that money is tax-free. No, that's that's super game. Yep. So super. I'll leave him with that. <clears throat> yeah, well, like I said, appreciate you coming on, Antonio. Yeah, I'm man. Later. We, can, we can talk about this... Uh, Subscribe yeah. situation. Yeah, that's exciting. That's a exciting play for you, bro. Like that's that's a, a given. That's a given. Exactly. Bro. I'll meet you later. All right, my dog, bro. All right, yeah.